This is a poem about rules, um, and it's based around three lines from the Iranian film Vajda, which was directed by Haifa Al Mansour. Um, it's called Maxims. A woman's voice is her nakedness. It's true. In the computer room past 12, your sigh, your yawn. It's like we curl up together, complicit and intent, then exit separately through turnstiles. Respectable girls go out of the sight of men. And it's true. The fascination of the separate. Rastafarians keeping a three-day fire. Women in their incarnadine tent. Cats that keep to the harbour side, one ear, one eye, a tattered cast fetched upon a pebble shore. Pythagoras's triangle is a theorem of God. And it's true you cannot race me on my own vehicle. You, just a mixture of forests and swamps and red rivers populated by enormous beasts which eat each other, could have no better lover than the neighbour's son, drawn by your headstrong challenge to every rule. This poem um, documents a dog walk after after my wife gave birth. <laughs> and suddenly it was like, holy smokes, it's it's eight o'clock, it's time for the for the walk. And so I had to drive back and take the dog out, and it was later than usual. Um, it's called Crossing the Owl's Bridge. So I took the circular path, wary as Mabel sniffed the grass, that this was a time for badgers. And she knew something extraordinary had happened, keeping close to me, the hushed lanes and closed rock roses. We've been told to keep you from the birthing room, the day-by-day -day pregnancy guide grown fancy with folklore, devoting equal weight to vernix, lashes and harbingers of doom. Don't forget its focus on men, admonished. It's not all about you. As I left theatre, a nurse slotted my mobile back in my palm. I retraced the scene, how the poorly administered canella hurt more than the lumbar puncture, how there was always a risk of bleeding, how the green plastic sheet spread, separating upper and lower halves, occluding the view, non-absorbent. Stripped of horizon, the light source invisible on our still serviceable path, the fields glowing and burnished. Finally, we came to the strait where the alley goes deep, becomes a holloway overcast with trees, warrens built into banks of clay, your pitch of voles and baby rabbits. Owl heard among houses to herald the fall of unmarried maidens. Ibu Grand Duke with full epaulettes, down covering feet and legs right to the leading edge of the wing. You dispatch almost in silence, incubate your clutch alone. Dive bombers now, Secure your tunnel, bloody our milk. We are sorry to set foot on your patch, for now our vulnerable bellies are exposed. Sometimes I play with your reach, hold a fingertip to a flame, face to the water, slip one leg then another over the ticker tape to keep out. And do I detect you, who can live to 16 but rarely make two, also wear a band carved against your innermost talon, contracting you, even as it marks you out for death. You who call to give us fair warning, who try to keep us clear. This is a poem about quiet heroism, um, perhaps like unpaid carers. Um, and it references uh, Travis, Travis from Paris, Texas, not, not Travis Bickle. Um, and in that film, Paris, Texas, there's a very charismatic figure who wanders in from the desert and the whole film sort of buckles to his will really this traveler but actually his, <laughs> his, his brother has raised his daughter for several years in his absence and does everything he can to rehabilitate this man and he doesn't really ask anything for it um, it's a bit like uh, the relationship between Bo Bridges and Jeff Bridges um, Bo Bridges, the less cool, uh, stolid figure, um, and then there's the, charis the charismatic one. Anyway, this this is um, a, a, a poem in praise of the supporting actor. 
it's got a um, <clears throat> it's got an epigraph uh, from the fall. Uh, it takes grace to play the second fiddle well. Supporting actor. My friend tells me it's the second guy, not Travis, but the married brother, at ease in his own image. The character actor, who only gets his name above a picture at 76, alongside an Oscar nomination. The one who carries the family, whose back of the hand bustles open a drape to turn the winch of the clothes era, rather than slap a woman's cheek. Runs water, or while appreciating the curls that hang low on the dusky brunette, collects a child by the white picket fence, only to jog across the sunset it took all day to establish, hold court in an American bar, and order well. Who might attempt to engage the chanteurs before giving it up and suggesting a chaser, a snapshot in his wallet of his wife and babies, each time knowing the cost on the battery, this guy, the guy who has something to tell me.